The, one of the things that always annoys me in horror books and horror films is the, if you can telegraph what's coming. Yeah. And I do, as I was writing it, I thought, well, people are going to think this is going to happen, so I'll make sure that happens instead. And I think all the way through it, I was very conscious that I didn't want people second guessing what was going on. And if, if anybody does second guess, the two or three major points, I'll be, I'll be staggered, I really will. Um, so hopefully ev every horrible, horrific surprise will be a horrible, horrific surprise when it actually hits the readers. Um, because there's nothing worse than being able to figure out what's going to happen during the course of a book or film. So hopefully everybody will be in the dark until it actually hits. Definitely becomes more difficult the more stuff you've written, because, and all, but also people are so used to there's a certain vocabulary of horror that people are used to reading or seeing, and it, it's very very difficult to find a different angle on that. Um, it's something I always keep trying to do. I sometimes think I should perhaps just do the same old stuff over and over again, but it's I, I can't do that. I like to do something different in every book. And, and it is difficult, it does become more difficult, especially when you've written, you know, 36 books or whatever like I have, I forget exactly how many it is. Um, but it does become difficult to find a different angle and to keep, keep readers guessing, which is what I try to do. I, I just think it's a really bad idea to try and jump on bandwagons, because in publishing, the, the gap between actually pre like presenting a finished novel and that and publication is so huge if you're trying to jump on a bandwagon chances are it's moved by the time the book comes out so I've, and I've never been one to sort of look at current trends and think oh I'm going to do something like that I don't want to do something like that I don't want to do what everybody else is doing I'd rather do something totally different so but it, it is I mean it's almost impossible finding something completely original everything has been done but you can usually find a different angle or come at it from and that's that's always what I've tried to do and hopefully what I've done in Chase. I, I wrote a, um, a script, well a script and a, and a book a few years ago called um, Epitaph, I don't know what it was, and I think within about two weeks of Epitaph being finished, Buried came out, the film with Ryan Reynolds, and it's like, oh shit, I've, ju I've just done this, but you feel like putting a disclaimer at the front of the book, so I, actually, I did this before Buried came out, um, so it's very annoying, and I did that with FX as well, years ago, um, I wrote a novel called Victims, uh, which was about a uh, special effects man who used real bodies in his in his uh, film scenes and about two weeks after I finished it FX came out which is all about a special effects man who used FX to you know solve crimes and stuff like that so yeah it is very annoying because then people because people nine times out of ten will turn around and say oh he's nicked that idea and it's like no no he nicked my idea but you can't do anything about it you just have to hope that people either don't notice or don't mind really yeah yeah or you know have good lawyers who can yeah. probably <laughs> sue the arse of the film company for well, plagiarism. Exactly. Like, even better, even better. But uh, no, it, it, it's just, I just hate being thought of like some, I'm doing the same as everybody else. I really don't like that. I, I, I just want to do my own thing. I don't want people to think I'm, you know, jumping on bandwagons. I don't want to do that. Uh, well, I think obviously with it, with it being a horror book, you have to have, you've got to have violence in it. I mean, it's just a, how explicitly you, you describe that violence. And I think possibly in Monolith, which is the book that I did before this, um, there wasn't as much violence, not in the way that it used to be described years ago, but I think in Chase, I've got certainly gone back to the old, to the way I used to describe violence and horrific scenes. It, it does go on for a long, long time. I say there's, there's two or three scenes in it which are as nasty as anything I've ever written. But I think my my readers particularly expect that from me, um, and hopefully this time they certainly won't be disappointed because it is really quite disgusting in places. <laughs> No, I mean, I think it works. The other, it occasionally works the other way around. That you think, oh, I'm going to, I'm perhaps going to rein back on the violence a bit. But otherwise, um, no. This time, when I, or when I was writing Chase, I just thought, right, I'm just going to, 
just going to do it. You know, I'm just going to see what happens, and if I look at it and reread it, and then think, oh, that's a bit, it's gone a bit too far, I can, I can cut it. But I, not at any time did I think that. I just thought, that's sod it. They want it like this. They can have it like this. So, but uh, it, it shows if it's fake. If it's fake, if you're forcing it, it shows in the writing. Um, but I'm, I'm lucky. I've always been. I've just been blessed with a sick mind, and I've always found it very easy to, to describe people's pain and suffering in horrendous physical detail, and I've certainly done that in Chase in places. I think you can't help self-censoring um, sometimes, and I mean, there's been occasions in the past where I've looked, I've thought about scenes that I was going to write, and just thought, no, nah, it'd just be too much. Um, so, you know, despite what people think, I don't just write exactly what I imagine and, you know, spew it out onto the page. I do actually look and think, not sure if that's working or not, it's gone too far. Um, yeah, there has to be a certain amount, I think there has to be a certain amount of self-censorship in, in everything you do, and obviously horror, probably even more so. Um, I think you, th there's fewer boundaries in horror than there are in any other genre probably and you can get away with stuff I wasn't saying you can get away with murder but that would have been terrible um, but you can get away with stuff in that genre that you wouldn't be able to get away with in possibly in a thriller I think I think that line has been blurred over the years um, and it's you can you can get away with most things in most genres but horror just gives you that option of just pushing a little bit harder if you want to which I do, and I think readers want as well, because it's, it's almost like there's no limits with horror. You just, you know, it's like you can go, you can, if you want to, go as far as, as you like. Um, and I've certainly always gone as far as I wanted to. So, yeah, I, th I think people do expect certain things, and if they don't get them, they get annoyed, and I, I can fully understand that. Well, I think certainly the, the bad guy doesn't necessarily have to... Well, there doesn't even have to be a bad guy and a good guy. Um, I, I think that's probably been like that all the time, all, you know, throughout history in, in horror. But in, in other genres, it has to be care, quite carefully delineated who's good and who's bad. But, you know, like you say, if you look at the classic icons of horror, I mean, Freddy Krueger's a, a villain, but everybody loves him. Um, Jason's a villain in Friday the 13th, but people seem to like him better than they do the, you know, idiotic teens that he kills off. So, as I say, you don't have the restraints in horror that you do in, in, in another genre. You don't necessarily have to get people to identify with the you know, white hat wearing hero. You can, you can have a, a guy, you know, who's a complete bastard. If you can make him acceptable to your readers, then you can get away with it. I, th I, think, what, I think whatever you write, it doesn't matter again which genre you work in, <clears throat> excuse me, you are writing about stuff that is personal to you. And obviously in, in horror, Yes, I do. I do tend to write. There's a lot of damage to people's eyes in my books, uh, and I think that's because I've always had a terror of going blind, so it probably it probably crops up in that. But yeah, I mean, there's certain parts, certain bodily parts, always elicit more reaction from a reader when something horrible is done to them. Um, so I think yeah, I do tend to concentrate on that. I mean, my my own fears of. I do have fears of, of being shut in small spaces, so it, there tends to be a lot of that, and I think that's reflected in Chase. It's a very claustrophobic, very paranoid book, uh, and I, I am a little bit paranoid myself. So yeah, any, anything that you that you feel very deeply, you just bring it out. You can exorcise it in that in that book that you write. Yeah, def yeah, if, yeah. I mean, if, if you if you've got if you feel that particular fear yourself, then it becomes a lot easier to transmit it to, to other people and to make that fear hopefully grow within them. Um, I mean, I, if I, I mean, I'm, if I had a fear of I don't know cats or something, I'd pr there'd probably be a lot more people in my books who you know were terrorised by kittens, but. I just, I just tend to kill them off a lot, that's all. Um, but yeah, if, if there's a particular fear you've got, then it's easier to, to translate that to, other, to, to readers. Um, but I, it does become that, and it becomes a bit of a cliche in itself. It's like, here's another book about a, about a writer who's having problems. It's like, oh, come on, make, make him a doctor or something. Just change it a little bit. But, but 
he, I suppose if, he's, if Stephen King's writing about writers all the time, he finds it easier to describe their predicament, obviously, because he's a writer, than he does to describe it if they worked at Quick Fit or something. You know, you have, you have, to, you have to write about what you know. Um, and obviously, with him being a writer, he would know how a writer's mind works better than a do how a doctor's mind works. You, ha you have to be, it has to be relatable to you. So you, you've now written about 35... Oh, yeah, uh, well, 35 under my own name and about another 30 under different names as well, so... And, and they've, they've all been... They've been cross-genre, they've been cross... Yeah, it's been kids, kids books, um, thrillers, non-fiction, you know, everything, really. Um, just stuff that were westerns, war novels, you know, just stuff that's appealed to me at the time or that's been commercial that publishers have asked for, you know, whatever, whatever's been there. And I, I just love storytelling. It doesn't matter which particular genre it's in, I just love telling stories. I think the research, well, the, yeah, and there is obviously even in, in westerns and war novels and stuff like that, it's got to be right. Everything you write about, the details have got to be correct, particularly with the weapons and things like that. Um, I don't enjoy research, I must admit. I'd, I'd rather just be able to sit down and start writing. I don't really, I don't like having to go through books and the internet and all that, finding out information. I'd just rather get on with it. Um, but obviously research has to be done. It's, it's interesting. I mean, over the years, it's, I've done some very interesting things. I've visited New Scotland Jars Black Museum for victims. I learned how to read tarot cards for shadows. I learned about dogfighting for relics, you know. So over the years, there's been interesting bits of research, but I just don't particularly enjoy it at the time. Well, I, th I think the, the fact that the that the title, which is when people read it, will discover what it actually means. I think this so it's, it comes back to what I was saying earlier on about people second guessing things and like always keeping them guessing and keeping them wondering what's going on. And it's almost like the title, and I don't wish this to sound pretentious in any way, shape or form, but it's almost like the title is a bit of a twist, is a bit of a conundrum as well. Um, we, and again, it's very, it's very, very difficult. I don't think I've written a book for years that I find so difficult to talk about without giving too much away. There's so many twists and turns in this that it's very, very hard even to discuss the nature of the plot without giving away what are really crucial uh, twists and turns. So I, I don't want to give too much away, obviously, but even the, t even the title in some ways is a bit of a, what's the word? I'm trying to think of a, of a polite word for it, is a, is a bit of a con, well, not a con, but I, I don't know, it's very, it's very difficult. The only word the only word I could think of was mindfuck, and I didn't really want to use that. But so uh, that's that's the only word I can think of to describe it. Well, it'd be very nice if everybody could keep the secrets, but I don't think they will. I think possibly once people have read it and start talking about it, um, once they've overcome their initial shock and horror, um, they probably will start giving some of the things away. But that's, you know, that's fine. You, you expect that. If somebody's, you know, paid their hard oh, money for a book, you can't expect them to keep quiet about it for the next 15 years, can you? It won't spoil it, though. I mean, anybody who, who knows what the twists are, um, it's not necessarily going to spoil their enjoyment of it, it's just that it will be a lot more, they would appreciate it a lot more if they could just read straight through from page one to page 350 without knowing what's going on, but it's not, it won't spoil it. <laughs>